Are you trying to land your first cybersecurity job? Well, in this video, I'm gonna walk you through how I went from being a sales associate to a cybersecurity professional. If you're just joining the channel for the first time, my name is John Good, and here we talk all about cybersecurity. If you like the video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel and check out the rest of the videos. People ask me all the time how to land their first cybersecurity job, and I realize that I've never talked about how I landed mine, so we're gonna do that in this video. Even though my path might not match yours exactly or at all, I hope that you at least get some useful points of encouragement from this journey. All right, let's get into it. So as I said, my first career field when I first started out wasn't in cybersecurity. I actually have an undergrad degree in business. So when I graduated in 2010, I started doing sales jobs and I was always interested in tech though. So that kind of helped. One year in college, I even set up my computer with Linux because I had actually wiped the entire Windows operating system, the OEM version. And if you're a broke college student, you're gonna go with what's free. It's just how it is. So anyways, I wasn't really a fan of pure sales roles. And this was back in 2012. So this was when cybersecurity was really kind of starting to become a buzzword in the media, but it wasn't mainstream like it is now. And basically my dilemma was that I only knew of degree programs, right? That's the traditional kind of path that a lot of people follow and a lot of people know. I knew nothing about certifications or boot camps or anything like that coming into this. And so I found my degree program and it's in information assurance, which is the term that the government really used to use for a lot of cybersecurity. They've kind of transitioned to more cybersecurity, but that's what my master's degree is in. And so when I was going through my internship program, I ended up getting an internship with Northrop Grumman, which is a defense contractor here in the US. And because of the 8570, I actually found out about Security Plus and had to actually pass that exam. One myth that I'm gonna dispel about internships is you're really not gonna to get to do a bunch of cool job related stuff. You're not really a trusted employee. So you're gonna do a lot of shadowing and kind of just learning more about the job and the career field. But I did get to meet some cool people and I also got to learn about vulnerability scanning. And I was doing classes the whole time. So when I ended up going back in the fall and going back to just that full-time schedule, I did things like passing my Network Plus and getting my CCNA too. So all of that ended 2013. And then if we fast forward to the beginning of 2014, I ended up getting a full-time job at Raytheon, which is another defense contractor. And the salary was around 60,000. So at this point, I had a Network Plus, I had a Security Plus, and I had a CCNA and almost finished with my master's. Even though I got a cybersecurity job right away and I didn't have to go through help desk or IT, I was applying to everything as I was looking. So entry-level IT, help desk, cybersecurity, everything that you can think of. Even though I had that internship and that kind of counts as experience, it doesn't really, but it was kind of helpful, especially with companies in the same industry. And one of the challenges that I found was trying to put things on my resume because I didn't have that previous experience. So I had to find ways to put projects and things like that on there. And one of the things that's nice right now is platforms like Try Hack Me that actually give you that ranking or give you that badge that show what you've learned. So I highly encourage you to use that to your advantage. All right, so now I wanna kind of step back and take a look at some of the things that I did and some of the things that I think that I could have done better knowing what I know now. So one of the things that I really noticed in my career was that I had a solid foundation in networking. I had a Network Plus, I had a CCNA. I was pretty solid on network foundations. What about operating systems though? I had used Linux and Windows operating systems in my personal and home environments, but I wasn't really familiar with it at the enterprise level or the professional level. And so I think that was really one of the areas where I struggled with, especially early on, because I didn't have that professional or system administrator kind of level of knowledge about operating systems. So one of the things that I would have done is I would have actually gone back and learned more about Linux. And I should have done that. I should have also learned more about Windows. So the Windows operating system, the client, the server, and how all of that interacts together before I started diving more into security subjects. Now, what about programming or scripting? Now, I really didn't have much background in programming or scripting. And in general, in cybersecurity, you don't really need a super in-depth background. In high school, I had done a JavaScript class, so I had a little bit of that object-oriented programming mindset. And then I also had done a few things where I had watched some videos and just some quick courses, but not 
that much to where I really felt comfortable in generating extensive scripts or programs that I could use in cybersecurity. Now, one of the things that I always tell people, I tell people that you should learn Bash, you should learn PowerShell, and you should learn Python because you can string it all together with Python. Now, Bash is obviously gonna be Linux and Unix operating systems as well as Mac OS and even Windows today. And then PowerShell is strictly for the Windows environments, but that way you know how to do the operating system commands and how to actually script things together in an automated function. And then when you start learning something like Python, the things you can do are endless. You can do so much more using all three of these together and you can create these big programs and then you can automate a lot of the things that you do that are routine or mundane and kind of just repetitive in your daily life. Even if they're not necessarily directly related to your job, you'll deal with a lot of spreadsheets and documents and things like that, where if you can just automate even moving data between these different files or different sheets, it makes life so much easier and less tedious. And of course, the big thing here is don't jump to just studying security topics. That's one of the things that we find ourselves in a lot, especially when we're first starting out, is we really wanna dive into a subject that we enjoy and that we wanna work in. So in this case, cybersecurity. We wanna learn all about cybersecurity and all the different things that we can do, but that's not always the best solution. You need to actually set your foundation of knowledge so your operating systems, your networking knowledge, your programming and scripting knowledge, even if you're not a guru or an expert in scripting, you need to kind of know how to cobble things together and make small scripts. And then once you start learning all this stuff, all this security stuff really just starts piling on top of that and building off of that foundation. So you'll be in a much better position. Now, from a work experience standpoint, the one thing that I didn't do was I did not get a part-time or a full-time job in IT or in cybersecurity. In my degree program, I did an internship, and that was certainly monumental in getting my actual full-time job, but I could have benefited from some of those experiences that I would have got from a regular full-time or part-time job. As an intern, you really don't get a bunch of the experience that you'll get as a normal employee. So this is really crucial, and this could absolutely help you out. And if you're in a normal degree program or some other kind of program where you have more time than I had in my program, well, then you'll start to get even more experience and you'll set yourself up even better than if you just had a short one or two year program. And then along those same lines, you need to make sure that you volunteer in local professional associations. So there's all these different associations that exist in all these different areas. And especially if you're in a large city, you're going to have a lot of these, but you have things like ISACA, which also makes certifications. You have ISC Squared, which also makes certifications. You have ISSA, you have OWASP, you have all these different associations where you can go network and meet people, and then you can greatly increase the opportunities or the chances that you'll have in order to get a cybersecurity job right away or very quickly. Worst case, maybe you just get an IT job in a company, but then you're starting to get work experience. So that's not really a bad thing. Networking is so important, and by volunteering in some of these professional associations, you're going to start building your brand as a professional, and you're going to get to know people that are in the industry, and that will do nothing but help you. And the last thing that I really want to talk about is personal branding. If you've watched any of my other videos or any of my other content, you know that I am big on creating a personal brand and really developing that professional image. That's something that I really didn't do when I was starting out in my career in cybersecurity. Now, if you've watched any of my other videos, you might have noticed that this is not my first career. I was doing sales and marketing type positions before I went back to get my degree in cybersecurity. And so even in those careers that were focused on building networks and building your personal brand, I really didn't get a lot of exposure in doing that or experience in doing that. And something like LinkedIn at that point was actually relatively new. It's been around for a while now and it's pretty established at this point. But again, when I was starting out, that is not something that I was doing or even that a lot of professionals were doing. 
and they still aren't really doing it right now. So if you can do it, you can really stand out in the crowd. Now, something that I tell people all the time is written walkthrough posts, even though they don't seem like they're super extensive or super fancy, you know, that is a great way to show your written skill. And that is a valuable skill in the workplace. And all of these, as we kind of go through them, some of them are going to appeal to you more than others. So it's really about finding what fits your personality and your interest. But walkthrough posts that are written are extremely important because you're going to write procedures, you're going to write policies, you're going to do all these kinds of things in the workplace. So that's actually a really valuable skill that not everybody has. And then you start to learn how to write in a technical format. Now, something else is videos performing tasks. Now, obviously, I create a lot of YouTube videos and a lot of video content. And that's because that is one of the things that I really enjoy and one of the ways that I like presenting information. But videos are another great way of building your personal brand. People learn how you talk. People learn how you communicate, what words you use, how you phrase things. All these kind of things matter. And in cybersecurity or IT or any tech career, really any career in general, you are gonna be presenting things to people in some fashion. Specifically in cybersecurity, we'll get reports or we'll have audits and we'll do all these kinds of things and we have to present them to our leadership. Or if we're going to present a new solution, we'll have to present that to our leadership. And they want to know that they have people that can actually communicate this information to different audiences. We also deal with people all over the organization. So we deal with people that are technical. We deal with people that are non-technical. And you have to be able to appeal and talk to all of these types of audiences. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to get your message across and you're going to be less effective. Now, videos are probably one of the ways that are least comfortable for a lot of people, especially in this career field, because a lot of people tend to be introverted or kind of on the more introverted side. But learning how to make videos and present your information in a clear and concise way is extremely important. The nice thing with videos too is that you can edit them so you can make mistakes or mess up and you can correct it and edit it out. So it's really not that bad because a lot of times you're honestly not gonna be doing live streams or anything like that. So it's not gonna be on the fly or ad hoc. You're gonna be able to sit down, really kind of plan out what you wanna do. And then if you make a mistake, you can just edit it out and make sure that you correct it and make it a better presentation. So I am a huge fan of creating videos, if you can't tell, based on my YouTube channel. And then of course, we've already kind of talked about this, but engaging on LinkedIn or meetups. So volunteering and associations, going to some of these meetup groups and volunteering for roles, but especially just talking to people that are in these groups and networking from a professional standpoint. You're gonna learn things from all these people because there's gonna be a lot of people that have experience. You're gonna meet people that are hiring managers or that know hiring managers that are on teams. Getting referred into a company that you're applying to is so helpful compared to just going in and applying blind. You are much more likely to get a call if you know somebody that's already on the team or that's the hiring manager than if you don't. And by engaging on LinkedIn, you're expanding your reach. So you're meeting people that are across the country, meeting people that are across the world. And that gives you a broader reach. You're gonna meet even more people. So it's kind of like a meetup group, but on steroids, if you will, because you're meeting so many people instead of those 10 or 15 or 20 people that would go to the local meetup group. So LinkedIn is one of my favorite ways, especially if you're a little bit more introverted, again, like a lot of us are, but this way, you're not actually having to physically meet people in person. You can respond in written format. Again, that goes back to the walkthrough posts that I talked about, and that helps you develop your written communication style. And then you can meet people, you can comment on what people say, you can ask people questions, and all of that shows up on your profile. So I can go to your profile right now, and I can see all the activity that you've done on LinkedIn because it will show everything in an activity log. So it is crucial that your engagements and how you interact with people is constant, but it's also professional too, because you don't want an employer to go look at your activity log and see that you're trolling somebody 
for six months straight, and that's all the posts that you have in your activity log. You want it to really, really help develop your personal brand and your place in this industry. Now, question of the day, are you already working in cybersecurity? And if not, what are you doing to get ready to work in cybersecurity? Let me know down in the comment section below. In this video, we walk through my path of going from sales associate to cybersecurity professional. Anybody can get into this industry if they have enough dedication and drive. So don't get discouraged by not having the right background or not having the right degree. It's possible. If you enjoyed the content, make sure to leave a like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.